what I'm going to do when we talk about hodgepodge, for me, hodgepodge just means a lot of different stuff. I have a workbook here that has, I think, 55 tags. Each one is something a little bit different, a little bit tricky. A lot of them, in the 10 years I've been living with the Tableau, people have said, well, Tableau can't do that. And I have a story I'll try to end with that I hope you find interesting and nobody sues me. A lot of the people, key people here, Joe is one of them, contributed to things that are in this. He doesn't know that, but he will now. I want to tell you a quick story about what led to this. I was babysitting my granddaughter, five years old. Papa, I want to paint. So I get out her paint, her watercolors, some paper, takes a brush, dips it in the water, dips it in a bunch of paints, and just goes <laughs> over a sheet of paper. Papa, you like that? Yeah, it's beautiful. You know what they are? Uh, they're beautiful little butterflies. She tears up the paper, she throws it down and goes, No, they're kitty cats. <laughs> Go through it again. New sheet of paper. Poppy, you like this? Yeah, they're beautiful. You know what they are? I'm a smart man, I'm an analyst. The last one were kitty cats. What are these? Puppy dogs, right? Tears up the paper, throws it down. No, they're horsies. One more time. Poppy, you like these? Yeah, they're beautiful. Do you know what they are? May I guess? Sure. So I start. I start going through the alphabet. I go through the whole alphabet. I go back through the alphabet. I go back through the alphabet again. I'm getting nowhere. She's just shaking her head no, rolling her eyes, getting irritated with the old man. I finally have to give up. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. How many times as analysts are we sitting there with some data? We're trying to find the issues, the opportunities, the anomalies. We're trying to do the predictive analytics. And everything we do is just another set of dots, another set of lines. The causal and influencing factors may not be there. What do we do? We can give up. And keep going, waste our time. I usually do number three. I had it number two, but when I said I usually do number two, that didn't work. <laughs> or we can determine what additional data might add to some of the insights. Sample sales, I won't even tell you what it is. This is sales by week over time, a few years. We go to Tableau and I Tableau, let's do a forecast. Show me where this is going to go. You know what? Why Tableau does this? Because there's no pattern in the data. So I add more data. Show you the whole data. This is what you were just looking at. This is precipitation for the weekend question. This is the temperature from very low to very high. This is charcoal sales in the Northeast. We highlight, we see two patterns. We sell charcoal and there's zero precipitation. People don't like to go out and barbecue in the rain. We sell it when the weather is warmer. So we've added some new data to help find our causal and influencing factors. Temperature, precipitation, but look at the bottom. Cold weather. Cold weather. Cold weather. Cold weather. First week in February, each one of them. Anybody have an idea why? Super Bowl. This was in the Northeast. Baltimore, New England. Enormous amounts of charcoal are sold in two places during the Super Bowl. The two teams that are in it still have their tailgate parties. They still have barbecues. You can be in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Your backyard, it can be seven below zero, and you're still having a barbecue. You're still having a tailgate party. Having the causal and influencing data is critical, especially when you know, David is talking about the forecasting. If you don't have those, 
your forecast is just doing what Ted Lowe is doing with data. It's just saying, don't try to find a pattern and continue the pattern. That thought, that whole thought about sometimes it just dies. And what led to this workbook? Two weeks later, I was back, and she ran up to me and says, Wow, I can do anything! I said, disappear. So she runs around the corner, where I can't see her, and says, see, I did it! Her teacher had told her, you can do anything you want. And she believed it. And I think that's critical for kids. That's critical for the education system, make these people believe they can be or do anything. But it also made me think, how many times have people said, you can't do this in Tableau? So let's take a look and see what really can be done. Anybody know Noah Salvatera? Except for Joe, Joe was last week. Noah's one of the Zen masters. This is, this is all Tableau, by the way. He hacked an AutoCAD file of a Tesla drawing and redid it in Tableau. I'm glad Andy Kriebel isn't here. An exploding 3D pie chart in Tableau. Anybody want to try that? Anybody here trigonometry geniuses? Pyramid chart in Tableau. Anybody done one of these? I do my pyramid charts flat, smaller flat, smaller flat, smaller flat. Yeah, I get pyramids. One of our friends at Interworks did this one. Radar chart. Now, everything you've seen so far requires some trigonometry in the formulas. Most of that trick you can pick up with a Google search. Most of them. I don't, I don't know about all of them. Let's talk about some other things. How many of you are using Tableau 9? How many of you have heard about, in Tableau 9, level of detail counts? How many have used them? How many of you would like to and can't figure out what the hell they are? This example. Let's just suppose you have historical data, sales data, and you pick up by state what you sold last year. You have an Excel spreadsheet or you have a database, another table in that database that's what you want to sell this year, a budget, a quota, a target. So you show the sales, you show the quota, and you show the difference. The quota is by state. This is great. This, this is no problem. Even though we have many records, and we're joining it with a single record table, we get that many to one join, we would duplicate the, the quota data over and over and over. If I had a thousand records for a state over here, i pull that quota in a thousand times. But as long as I use minimum, maximum, or average for my value, and I'm showing state, I have no problem. But what happens if I want this whole view, instead of by state, I want to show it by region. Using a level of detail calc, and I'm showing the calc here, I'm just saying, anytime you look at customer state, which is our quota field, anytime you look at that, consider it one time and take the max of the value. I could have done min or average, I think, just as easily. But I just want one time. So now as I pull many records in for each region, each state only gets the value one time. If I just used min of the quota, I would get the smallest quota in all the states. If I use max, I get the biggest one. If I use the average, I get the average of all the states. With that level of detail calc, I have the ability to do some things that have been extremely difficult in Tableau before. Now, this workbook, I'm going to go through a few more things slowly, and then I'm going to go through a bunch real quick. There are 50-some tabs in this workbook. 
And this workbook is on the website, which you can download. I'll give you the link when we're done. Dual access maps. Has anybody worked with dual access maps? You can click on a state, and it becomes an object. I can click on the circle within the state, and it becomes an object. Basically, this is a dual access chart. One for the map, one for the dots. But it lets me have two different drill pads, two different actions that I can perform. How many of you deal with dashboards and have performance issues? <laughs> Those are not two different questions. You're aware that in dashboards, you can tell as you're drilling, don't waste time, don't go to my server and populate all of these until I've limited what goes into that view. In this case, I'm looking at regions. If I click on the east, I go to the states in the east. I click on Delaware. I go to the zip codes in Delaware. I click on one zip code. I get the rest. I click in white space. The other three go away, and I start over. Prior to version 9, each one of those clips was four hits to the server if I populate every one of those objects all the time. So this was very important back in pre-9 so that we weren't hitting the server too many times with these serial processes. With version 9, there's a lot of parallel processing that goes on. And I don't know, maybe Joe can correct me here. I say there's a lot of parallel processing that goes on. I have four queries running, it'll run all four of them at once and try to get the results. I haven't seen it in all cases, and I haven't figured out when it does and when it doesn't. I don't know, Joe's, Joe, I speak afterwards and see if you have an answer to that. How many of you use tooltips? Customize your tooltips. This is an old one, been around for quite a while. You know, you can't put a chart in a tooltip, right? You're doing a new text. You've seen that one before? You may know how this is done. Anybody that hasn't seen it before figure it out that quick? This is all text. Each one of those bars is an ASCII character 166. It fills up the ASCII character block. And if you push 100 of those together, it calculated a percent of sales. Percents 25, give me the left 25. Percents 30, give me the left 30. And then I color just by going into the tooltip and coloring each one with the risk text editor. I mean, Ty Alavisos used to work at Tableau, came up with this the first time. Anybody ever had to figure out the number of days difference between two dates, excluding the weekends? This is the calculation for that, and I will be the first to say, anytime you see a calculation I've done, if you see a better way or know a better way, tell me. This works. This worksheet will just show you this is the calculation. The left side is showing you the results. Anybody here use R? Anybody want to use R? On my website, I have a page, a one page document, simple page on how to install R on your Windows notebook with Tableau. It's free, the download's free, the product's free, the individual statistical packages are free. Here's just an example of using R in Tableau. The red circles are outliers. This is sales by week. The red circles are outliers. There's outliers for profit, outliers for sales. What I find interesting when you look at something like this, a statistical outlier, anybody see anything interesting in this view? I have three weeks of negative profit that aren't even considered outliers. Is that good for business? This is not going to work because I'm not on the internet. Set the URL. That help button is nothing more than an image, a little help image. 
you can have a URL associated with an image. When you think URL, people are thinking web page, website, but also think any addressable file, any file that this machine can get to, works. So I can have a PDF out there for documentation. If I want to change my documentation, I don't have to have a, a dashboard object in my workbook that's documentation. I can have a PDF file and just refer to it. Now I have it on my server. I just refer to the PDF file, it pops up in a new window. As long as the machine that's clicking to get it understands the PDF extension. You can have PDFs, Word docs, Excel docs, whatever you want. So when you think URL, think more than just a web page. When you're looking at a map of the United States and all the states have dots on them, what kind of a map is that? The scatter plot. Latitude and longitude are just the xy axis. Tableau lets you use background images. This is an image that just is showing a very bad situation for a company. The further to the right something is, the bigger the impact negative, and the higher up it is, the higher the probability something will happen. This is visualizing something that was done in a predictive analytic way. We took the results and then visualized it this way to show that you're in a lot of trouble. It's very likely these five or six, eight things are going to happen, ten things, and they're all going to have a very negative impact on you. So it's just a quick visual way of someone seeing something that might not understand a more technical predictive model. Joe, are you the one that did this the first time, put the 45 degree line in the scatter plot? I gave you credit for it, so yes. It's just sometimes you have a scatter plot. This goes up to 11,000. This goes up to 120,000. But sometimes you just want a 45 degree line in there for whatever reason. And this is a little, little worksheet that tells you how to do that. I was working at a hospital once doing a contract for a hospital where the doctors wanted to be able to get to different Tableau views from their iPads. And when we gave them Tableau Server, they looked at it and went, eh, don't like it. Make it look like an iPad. Well, we didn't have any iPad programmers available to do it, so we just did this in Tableau. Each one of these is an icon. And each one of these icons has a URL that goes to a view on Tableau Server for them. This is a distribution map where we're saying from different distribution centers, different products are being shipped. Now, in the real world, we have six dif distribution centers and about 20 product categories. And one thing we found in one case, shipping from Georgia, uh, one product, we had a lot going to California. Why do we have so much going to California when the reality is we have a Nevada distribution center a whole lot closer to California? So they're able to visually just go through very, very quickly, instead of looking at tens of thousands of lines of sales data, they were able to look at this very, very quickly and determine where they needed to move product to match sales. Trellis chart. You know what a trellis chart is? This is 25 states in a 5 by 5 grid. It's not state on the row column or state on the or row shelf or state on the column shelf. It's two calculated fields that determine where state goes. I'm going to show you this one. And Pareto chart. You don't see Pareto chart in the help or the show me. The Tableau does Pareto charts. You don't see a waterfall chart. The Tableau doesn't. When I worked for Tableau, I was called into a, a shootout between three different vendors. I had two competitors to Tableau. 
When you work for Tableau, the one thing you're told is, if somebody attacks you, you can fight back. You never pick on a competitor. Don't start the fight. Everybody's a good guy. We all, we're all going to win. All three of us went through a five-minute presentation. I was the last one to present. When I was done, I just hit a button on my computer to wipe out the presentation. So the screen behind me was white. And then I sat down with the other two guys facing the audience. We were now going to take questions from the audience. Somebody says, so one of the competitors, well, what do you do that Tableau doesn't do? And he stood up and he said, well, Tableau can't do a Pareto chart. Tableau can't do a Trellis chart. And I've got this workbook sitting there. Somebody says it can't do a Pareto chart. I reopen my screen. I'm now behind him showing a Pareto chart. When he said they couldn't do trellis, trellis charts and he was talking about it, it took me about five seconds to throw this up. When he hit the tableau can do a waterfall chart and I threw that up, the whole place cracked up. And he was done. I didn't pick on him, but I was fighting back. Okay. What we've learned with Tableau, and, and Joe is probably the best proponent of this, I don't think there's anything that we can't do. That is not a challenge to ask me how to do something tricky. It's an offer to ask Joe. <laughs> and one client that didn't want to buy Tableau desktop for a whole bunch of people, they just wanted to use server, but they wanted that user to have some options. Just for some simple charting, we did a demo there. These are parameters. Here's by region, by subcategory, and my sales are colored by profit, or I can show by category, by state, and color by units. So but just by using parameters, we can duplicate some of the power of Tableau Desktop for those people that don't have the left side, that data window, so they can't drag and drop fields, we can give them the ability to basically put those fields on the row of column shows. Parameters again let us take something and say if our sales go up 2%, our sales go up 25%, what's last year versus this year going to look like? Calculation showing miles or kilometers between two points. Again, a little bit of trade, not a lot, and it's done for you. If you have two latitude, longitude points, and you don't really care about an accuracy that takes the curvature of the Earth into account. Anybody know what these are called? I put question marks out there. I do know what they're called, but you know what they're called? The chart type? They're Harvey balls. Dr. Somebody Harvey is the one that came up with this. If you looked at consumer products, Reports. This is how they rate cars, refrigerators, any product they review. This was an old one. The people that did this said Tableau now has the fully black in one for the analytics as soon as they have the interface to bar. Anybody work with mainframes? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a calculation in Tableau to convert from number, number to hex. Some people that needed that. Okay. And again, there's probably an easier way. This was my way. Some of these are not worth looking at. Like this one. This one was fixed when Tableau stopped using the jet engine as the default for <laughs> flat files. So 15 more to go. That's why I'm going quickly so we don't suck up a lot of time. Color palettes in Tableau. I've got two custom color palettes I use more than any others for the analytics I'm doing. One is a divergent color palette called red, white, red. And it goes from red to white to red. This guy. Why would I do that? 
How many times do you have something where you have a target? Anything above it is bad. Anything below it is bad. So here, the bars that are in white are close enough to the target, they're okay. Anything low by a certain amount or high by a certain amount is colored red. Just a simple two colors, three colors, depending on how you look at it. This top one, anybody here colorblind? Thank you. Usually I have to go to a, a room of 500,000 people to get someone to raise their hand. Tableau's, Tableau's default color palettes, the colors themselves are all muted. No color should attract your eye. They can all have meaning. But the color itself should not attract, attract your eye. I have three kinds of color blindness. And even the ones I can see, I don't know the names of. I can, a little bit, see the difference between this red and this green. These are pure RGB coded colors. The black is all zeros RGB, zero, zero, zero. The red is FF, zero, 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 zero. All red, no green, no blue, etc. This color palette I use a lot when I'm doing something for a large, especially a large older male audience, I, I think male executives are color blind, blind at the 20% rate, not the 6% average. That's another funny story. I was in Kansas, uh, in Tennessee. I was in Tennessee at a marketing company. We were doing a presentation for seven C-level executives. Building the presentation, chief marketing officer, and I was building this presentation for the end of the week. And I suggested, since it was older white males, a colorblind palette. And she blew up. We will not use that. We're a marketing company. We don't hire colorblind people. I went back to the hotel, not being a stupid person. I duplicated the final workbook, changed the color palettes to the colorblind color palette. When I went to do the demo, I loaded mine up, then I loaded the one she liked. Up. First chart, five seconds into it, CEO goes, excuse me, uh, Jack and I, the CFO, we're both so colorblind, I, I can't tell the difference in those colors. Can you fix that? Alt-Tab, done. Alt-Tab, that quick, making his requested change, sold a six-figure deal to Tableau the next day. Tableau forecasting, I'm going to show another chart to go along with something that David had talked about earlier, and it's this one. The top chart, the dark line is an actual sales. The lighter is a Tableau forecast. Upper right is a linear trend. Lower right is polynomial two. And no, lower left is polynomial two. Lower right is polynomial three. All three trend lines are mathematically correct. What story are you trying to tell? <laughs> And I think David was willing to be very careful about trying to tell a story with statistics. If you don't have the causal, the influencing factors, if you don't have what really is causing things to change, and he showed that last model where there were 10 different things they were able to change, they're all influencers. There are very few things that don't have multiple influencers that are probably not in your data right up front. Use Tableau parameters to get them in, or go buy the data. Anybody have trouble with colors? Every time you want to color a cell, the whole row gets colored? <laughs> this is a workbook that just says, look, I want to color just the values that are negative. Not the whole row, just the values. Okay. Tableau cannot do 
Gauges, Canada. Each one of these is an image. The needle itself, little trig function to decide where in that 360 degree circle it's going to be drawn. This is another trick. Have any of you used this trick where you can take one dashboard, title stays the same, bottom stays the same, but I can change the view with a parameter? I've got a couple of these that are 10 or 12 in that drop down list. And there are enough other charts on there that they never want to change. And we didn't want to have to duplicate to make 10 dashboards to have 10 different top views to go with the bottom views. Have you all used layout containers in your dashboards? Does anybody just love layout containers? Are you being sarcastic, Joe? Because I, I hate them. I use them all the time. Well, I use them too. They're pains. I wouldn't be able to use Tableau without layout. Okay. I want a class. <laughs> Layout containers have their place. They're very good. They give you a lot of flexibility. They can be very frustrating when you first start using them. This, this method of using layout container hopefully is very easy. <coughs> Stacked or group bar charts. People that don't like the fact that Tableau presents their bars if they have multiple dimensions across the top and the bottom here, but the bars all run together. How can you get this white space between them? Anybody know how this one was done? Do you know in Tableau, if you say, I want subtotals or I want totals, if you're summing fields, the default is sum, but you can change the total to be an average or a min or a max. You can say, don't add them up, just give me the minimum, which is what was done here. Each one of these has an extra bar. Just change the color to white, and the bar is the minimum value of these three. It's a subtotal using a minimum value. The color of the bar is the same as the color of the background of the chart. And then we white out, we blank out, blank out. The description. This is the traditional way people have been using for a while where they actually create a continuous variable for the x-axis so that up front there's no data and at the end there's no data. A little too much hard coding for me. You know you can use custom shapes. It's like you can use custom colors. You can have your own shape file. Anybody seen any with custom shapes? There are a couple going out that are using a baseball team. Where, where do more people hit home runs? Which teams hit them? And they have where the ball lands in the stands based on the logo of the team. And somebody hit it there. I need help with this one. This, this is supposed to be a circle of so many miles around a Tableau office in London. Unfortunately, it's not a circle, and I don't know what's wrong with that. Anybody here a wizard with how to draw a map? Draw a circle with a tree? Okay, this is an ellipse that's approximately 3.5 miles or 3.8 miles from the center point. Tableau 8.2 storyboards. Anybody use storyboards? That first granddaughter story was Tableau story points, storyboard. Back before 8.2, we could still mimic that same capability. This is something similar. This was for a certain age group. Here's an average by age drug usage. Another age group, another age group, another age group. 
highlight them all, get them all. So we can tell stories in a different way. So let me, let me ask you a question about storyboards. Nobody's used storyboards? Just one shame on you. If you're a salesperson, use stories to sell your customer, to sell your prospect. If you're an analyst, you can come up with the greatest finding in the world. But if you don't sell what you've done to your boss or to a decision maker, it's worthless. Learn to use the power of storytelling, whether it's a Tableau storyboard or something else. But you can't do anything with Tableau storyboards you can't do using tabs. You can't do anything you can't do using PowerPoint. But when you use it, it puts you in a mind frame of telling a story. And what are the components of a story? And this one, you know, the rumor I heard is this one was kind of interesting. This shows from one year to the next, tooth decay for different patients. And this is just a small sample. But the company that used this ultimately decided that, you know what? We're seeing damage in a certain area at a higher rate than other areas. We can visually see it. And they changed the design of a toothbrush. Anybody have the toothbrush that's kind of hooked on the end? That came from this kind of picture. No, I'm not connected to it, but I can't show you that one. Oh, coming soon. I want to be able to do, you'll love this, I want to be able to do gauges without trade. So this is my start. Unfortunately, what this is, is a pie chart with exactly one half of it, the same color as the background. The yellow, red, green, and the black line are all based on data. And the calculations create the chart. Unfortunately, Tableau starts its pie chart at noon. I call Mark Reader ones. I think you know Mark. Mark is the, the god of what's in Tableau. He's been there forever. I said, Mark, is there any way I can turn these charts from right side to being flat? And he said, yeah. He says, get on with the WebEx session. I'll show you how. So I go through the problem of linking up a WebEx session. He takes an external camera, camera, puts it on himself, and he says, OK, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hung up on him. Okay, does anybody have any questions? I skipped through a bunch of this stuff. I'm trying to hurry through it to show you everything that's there. Biolytics.com is my website. Biolytics.com slash SoCal Super Tug TWBX case sensitive, and I have no idea why. This workbook is out there. Most of the workbooks are annotated. The comments, as David showed, have a slash slash in them to show you what we're doing and why. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't talk about here that's in the workbook. Leave that up for a minute. Q and A questions. Anybody? Anybody awake? Question. Ninety percent of the time, Google's going to send you to one of the major bloggers or back to the Tableau website. Um, if you get wrangled Joe's email address or something, he's an incredible source. Any of the Zen masters are typically there to help. Any other, most of us do 10, 20 calls a week with people that just say, "I hey, need help with something." And that's part of part of the cost that goes along with it. Um, if you have specific things, send me an email. It's just any anything at biolytics.com will get to me. Chuck C. Hooper is my wife irritated with me one time, sent an email to shithead at biolytics.com. <laughs> I, I do have another story when you mentioned Google. One of the views, I don't know if we can find it here real quick, probably not. One of the views was a map. 
you can click on some part of the map, and, and Tableau has this in its sample data or get up until nine. You can click on a fire or a gun or a medic symbol, and it would go to a Google map. It would pass the X and Y coordinates. The very first time I demoed it to someone, they said, well, would that work for UPC codes? So if we had a list of our competitors' UPC codes, and we put those UPC codes in there, can we click on one? I said, sure. So I went into a spreadsheet, and I said, we'll just use some dummy codes. 111, 222, 333, XXX, YYY, ZZZ. When you do a Google search in a demo with XXX as your pass <laughs> parameter, <laughs> you cannot hit the close button fast enough. <laughs> So use all numbers, trust me.